Oh, that's good. Filter, post. Hi. Some of us fear the impact that social media has on our lives. We're afraid it's making us more narcissistic, depleting our memory, diminishing our attention. But are these fears justified? Today, I would like to talk about each one of these and challenge us to be fearless in our approach to social media. I was recently invited to speak in London. I used to live in the UK, and I was so excited about being back. I love the energy and the excitement. So when I got on the tube, that's what they call the subway there, I was smiling away, trying to catch people's eyes. But no one looked at me. They didn't smile at me. They were so busy looking at their phones, just like I was when I walked out on stage. Their eyes moving up and down the screen, their fingers scrolling furiously. And I thought, what are we becoming? Well, we're becoming more connected. We're becoming more empathetic. We're becoming more fearless. Today's young people are often called generation me, me, me because of the fear that social media is creating a generation that is narcissistic and obsessed with self-promotion. But I would like to share a different perspective. What if the person I was connecting with on the phone was standing in front of me? Would you interrupt our conversation? Could we reimagine that our online connections are just as meaningful as our face-to-face -face ones, and that these online connections could help develop empathy. Let me illustrate. Every winter, our family goes skiing, and last year was no exception. But early into the trip, I was skiing on an expert run, and I dislocated my knee. I spent the rest of the season on crutches, feeling very sorry for myself. So, while my family was out enjoying the snow, I decided to post this on social media with the tag, I must have been naughty this year because all Santa brought me was a dislocated knee. I was blown away. Complete strangers responded with such warmth and kindness, sending me prayers, healing wishes. A couple of Santas on snowboards even obliged by sending me this festive picture. What would make people who hadn't even met me reach out with such warmth and compassion? Could it be that social media may in fact encourage empathy? Well, as a psychologist and a researcher, I wanted to test this hypothesis. So I conducted an experiment. I gave over 400 people an empathy question. I asked them questions like, sometimes I try to understand my friends better by imagining how things look like from their perspective. Another question, when I'm upset at someone, I try to put myself in their shoes for a while. I also asked them about their social media use in two ways. One, in personal use. How often do they spend time chatting, sending comments, commenting on their friends' photos? And impersonal use. How often do they share links, use the apps on social media? Here's what I found. That people who spent more time connecting and engaging with the personal use activities were more empathetic. When we take a moment to actually engage with someone directly on social media, we have a chance to practice and experience empathy more. Well, some of you might be thinking, that's great for empathy, but what if social media is damaging our cognitive skills? It's overloading us with information, depleting our memory, and affecting our learning as a result. You might even say it's the elephant in the room. It's a topic we're scared to talk about, <laughs> like this elephant. But you know, an elephant isn't just a symbol for topics to avoid. It's also celebrated for its excellent memory. And it's this side of social media that I would like to talk about today, that perhaps social media could help improve our memory, especially our working memory. You can think of working memory like your brain's conductor. In the same way that a conductor brings harmony to an orchestra, working memory is the cognitive skill we use to bring order to the myriad of information around us. We use it to process information, prioritize what's important, and ignore what isn't. This is an especially crucial skill when it comes to social media because of the constant stream of incoming information. Take your typical social media feed. We have to decide what information is 
irrelevant, that we aren't interested in. So you could be thinking, not another food picture. Ignore, move on. Ugly dog picture, oh, definitely move on. But we also use working memory to prioritize information that's of interest to us. So for me, it's post about barefoot running. But does this skill have any real world application? I tested over 100 high schoolers to find the answer. I discovered that high schoolers who spent over a year using social media were adept at transferring this cognitive skill to the test we gave them. They had higher working memory scores compared to those who used it for less time. And when I looked at all the different social media activities, it was checking friends' updates that was most linked to better cognitive skills. Why? Well, social media is a selection process. We have to quickly decide how to prioritize and ignore information. And when we spend time checking friends' updates, we get a chance to learn by doing this more. So maybe over time, our memory could look a little bit more like the elephant's. Another fear that we have is that our brain is getting sidelined, that we can't focus our attention on the person in front of us because of the constant demands by social media. We used to use our brain like a spotlight, focusing on one thing at a time. I call this the spotlight brain. But today's world isn't like that. It's hard to use a spotlight brain to stay on top of all the tweets, the updates, the notifications and we miss noticing important information. A classic psychology experiment illustrates the spotlight brain. Participants were shown a video of people passing a ball, and they were asked to count the number of ball passes. Now halfway through the video, a man shows up in an animal costume. At the end of the video, participants are asked the number of ball passes, and they're also asked, did they notice anything unusual? Because of the spotlight brain, many of them missed noticing the man in the animal costume. Social media has changed our attention. Now, we use it like a floodlight. We can focus on more than one thing at a time. I call this the floodlight brain. In the same way that you can take a phone call while cooking, you can listen to me talk while watching these fantastic UNF basketball players, Chase and Osborne, who are helping me out today. Thank you. I wanted to know more about the link between the floodlight brain and social media, so I conducted another experiment. I gave nearly 300 young adults an attention task, where they had to focus their attention on different pieces of information. I also asked them how often they use social media. The results showed that those who use social media more had this floodlight brain, and they were more accurate at the attention task they were also nearly five times less likely to miss the important information. Social media has changed our attention, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Instead of an air ball, the floodlight brain can give us a slam dunk. Today, I would like to challenge us to rethink how we approach social media. Here are three things we can do. Number one, Use the floodlight brain at work when you have to be more productive and work with more than one thing at a time. Number two, train your memory. The next time you're scrolling through that social media feed and a friend's name pops up, take a moment. Try to remember something from the last post. Doing this can help you process information more quickly and strengthen your long-term memory. Number three, empathy is a learned skill and we can use social media to develop it. As I was preparing for this talk, I reached out to the people that I met on social media, and I asked them to share with me stories of how they had been inspired, encouraged, or challenged by others on social media. I was so uplifted by what I saw. Stories from runners encouraged by other runners around the globe, recovering from injury, doing yoga and handstands, enjoying nature, encouraging us to play outside and climb trees, cooking, to overcome autoimmune diseases, inspired encounters, meeting heroes, supporting social causes, and professional dreams. Today, I would like to challenge you to do the same. Take a moment, connect with someone on social media, share an encouraging message with them, and use the hashtag happy to connect to share your story with us. Finally, 
I'm happy to connect with you today. Thank you.